Question 1. When creating a risk assessment the severity of harm is multiplied by what? Give one answer. A. The area of the construction site. B. The cost of injury or harm. C. The likelihood of harm occurring. D. The number of workers on site. The correct answer is C. Question 2. What is the main reason for attending a site induction? Give one answer. A. Permits to work will be written and handed out. B. Site rules and hazards will be explained. C. To create the method statements for the site. D. To get to know other new employees. The correct answer is B. Question 3. You suffer an injury at work and the details are recorded in the accident book. What must happen to this accident record? Give one answer. A. It must be destroyed at the end of the job, due to confidentiality. B. It must be kept in a place where anyone at work can read it. C. It must be sent to the insurance company at the end of the job. D. It must be treated as confidential under data protection laws. The correct answer is D. Question 4. You have been injured in an accident at work and, as a result, are absent for more than 7 days. Which two of the following actions must be taken? Give two answers. A. The accident must be recorded in the accident book. B. The emergency services must be called to find out how the accident happened. C. The local hospital and the benefits office must be informed. D. You must pay for any first aid equipment used to treat your injury. E. Your employer must inform the health and safety executive. HSE. The correct answer is A and E. Question 5. Which of the following statements best describes a near miss? Give one answer. A. An incident that nearly resulted in injury or damage. B. An incident where someone was injured and nearly had to go to hospital. C. An incident where someone was injured and nearly had to take time off work. D. An incident where you were just too late to see what happened. The correct answer is A. Question 6. What is the main objective of carrying out an accident investigation? Give one answer. A. To find the cause and prevent recurrence. B. To help track the cost of insurance claims. C. To identify the people involved. D. To place blame. The correct answer is A. Question 7. Which two of the following will help you to find out about the site emergency procedures? and emergency telephone numbers. Give two answers. A. Attending the site induction. B. Guidance from the Health and Safety Executive HSE website. C. Guidance from your local job center. D. Looking in the telephone directory. E. Reading the site notice boards. The correct answer is A and E. Question 8. Evacuation routes should be, give one answer. A. Clear and unobstructed. B. Lit at all times of the day. C. Painted bright green. D. Used as assembly points. The correct answer is A. Question 9. 
If you find an injured person and you are on your own, what should you do first? Give one answer. A. Ask the injured person what happened, and then find your supervisor. B. Assess the situation, do not put yourself in danger. C. Inform your supervisor that someone has been injured. D. Move the injured person to a safe place, and then find your supervisor. The correct answer is B. Question 10. Will all types of glove protect your hands against chemicals? Give one answer. A. No, different gloves protect against different types of hazard. B. Only if you cover the gloves with barrier cream. C. Only if you put barrier cream on your hands first. D. Yes, all gloves are made to the same standard. The correct answer is A. Question 11. Which two items are classed as hazardous waste? Give two answers. A. B. C. D. E. The correct answer is B and C. Question 12. Which of the following is bad practice? Give one answer. A. Mixing all waste in one skip. B. Refueling carefully to avoid spills. C. Storing materials safely. D. Switching off plant and equipment when it is not in use. The correct answer is A. Question 13. Which of the following is an effective way to avoid causing harm to protected species? Give one answer. A. Avoiding breeding season. B. Only working at night. C. Take them to the site office. D. Using manually operated machinery. The correct answer is A. Question 14. Which of the following does not cause a nuisance to neighbors of a building site? Give one answer. A. Carefully directed site lighting. B. Dust and fumes from the site. C. Lorries and heavy plant traffic. D. Noise and vibration from the work. The correct answer is A. Question 15. What type of pollution would you associate with handheld power tools? Give one answer. A. Light. B. Noise. C. Smoke. D. Water. The correct answer is B. Question 16. What is the main cause of long-term health issues in the construction industry? Give one answer. A. Being struck by a vehicle. B. Breathing in hazardous dust and fumes. C. Exposure to loud noise. D. Slipping and tripping. The correct answer is B. Question 17. What best describes how workers should treat dust? Give one answer. A. Assume dust is not safe wherever they are working. B. Assume dust is safe if they are working outdoors. C. Assume dust is safe if they don't feel any ill effects. D. Assume dust is safe unless told otherwise. The correct answer is A. Question 18. Asbestosis is associated with exposure to asbestos. Which part of the body does this disease affect? Give one answer. A. B. 
C. D. The correct answer is D. Question 19. Which one of the following is true of repeated exposure to small doses of dust? Give one answer. A. Any effects will be immediately apparent. B. It can help to build up immunity. C. It is unavoidable and harmless. D. The effects will build up over time. The correct answer is D. Question 20. What should you do if you need special respiratory protective equipment, RPE, to handle a chemical but no RPE has been provided? Give one answer. A. Do not start work until you have the correct RPE and training. B. Get on with the job, but try to work quickly to reduce exposure. C. Sniff the substance to see if it makes you feel unwell. D. Start the work, but take regular breaks to reduce exposure. The correct answer is A. Question 21. Which one of the following statements about respiratory protective equipment, RPE, is true? Give one answer. A. Employers must supply it at cost when it is needed. B. Employers must supply it free of charge when it is needed. C. Workers should provide their own. D. Workers should share the cost with the employer. The correct answer is B. Question 22. Which of the following two options are likely to cause the most dust exposure? Give two answers. A. Using hand tools outside. B. Using power tools with extraction. C. Using power tools without extraction. D. Working with dry materials. E. Working with wet or damp materials. The correct answer is C and D. Question 23. You have been using a vibrating tool and the ends of your fingers are starting to tingle. What does this mean? Give one answer. A. You can carry on using the tool but you must hold it more tightly. B. You can carry on using the tool but you must loosen your grip. C. You must not use this tool, or any other vibrating tool, ever again. D. You need to report your symptoms before they cause a problem. The correct answer is D. Question 24. What are two recommended ways to protect your hearing? Give two answers. A. Cotton wool pads over your ears. B. Ear defenders over your ears. C. Ear plugs in your ears. D. Rolled tissue paper in your ears. E. Soft cloth pads over your ears. The correct answer is B and C. Question 25. What does wearing hearing protection do? Give one answer. A. Helps you to hear better. B. Reduces damaging noise to an acceptable level. C. Repairs your hearing if it is damaged. D. Stops you hearing all noise in the workplace. The correct answer is B. Question 26. How can you help reduce the risk of hand arm vibration when using a vibrating tool? Give one answer. A. Do not grip the tool too tightly. B. Hold the tool at arm's length. C. Hold the tool more tightly. D. Use more force on the tool. T.E. correct answer is A. 
Question 27. Why should you not use white spirit or other solvents to clean your hands? Give one answer. A. They could block the pores of the skin. B. They could carry harmful bacteria that attack the skin. C. They could strip the protective oils from the skin. D. They will remove several layers of skin. The correct answer is C. Question 28. What is the main issue with using barrier cream to protect your skin? Give one answer. A. It can be broken down by some substances. B. It can irritate your skin and give you dermatitis. C. It costs too much to use every day. D. It is difficult to wash off. The correct answer is A. Question 29. How can physical stress of a job be reduced? Give one answer. A. An increase in pay for the same job. B. Job rotation and task variation. C. Making equipment challenging to use. D. Repetitive actions when working. The correct answer is B. Question 30. Fatigue may be a result of what? Give one answer. A. A healthy diet. B. Good sleeping patterns. C. Good work-life balance. D. Working long hours. The correct answer is D. Question 31. What should you do if you need to carry a load down a steep slope? Give one answer. A. Assess whether you can still carry the load safely. B. Carry the load on your shoulder. C. Put the load down and let gravity move it down the slope. D. Walk backwards down the slope to help you balance. The correct answer is A. Question 32. What should you do if you have been told how to lift a heavy load but you think there is a better way to do it? Give one answer. A. Ask your workmates to decide which way you should do it. B. Discuss your idea with your supervisor before lifting. C. Forget your idea and do it the way you have been told. D. Ignore what you have been told and do it your way. The correct answer is B. Question 33. In addition to heat, what are the other two factors that must be present to start a fire? Give two answers. A. Argon. B. Carbon dioxide. C. Fuel. D. Nitrogen. E. Oxygen. The correct answer is C and E. Question 34. Match the fire extinguisher with the described contents. Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is A. Question 35. A worker needs to use a flammable liquid. How much should be taken from the store? Give one answer. A. Enough to carry out the immediate activity. B. Enough to last a month, but inform the site manager. C. Enough to last a week to save time going to the store. D. No more than the manual handling rules allow. The correct answer is A. Question 36. A worker spills a large quantity of petrol when refueling a dumper. What should they do? Give one answer. A. Contain. Stop. Notify. B. 
Notify. Contain. Stop. C. Stop. Contain. Notify. D. Stop. Notify. Contain. The correct answer is C. Question 37. You need to work near an electric cable, but the cable has bare wires. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Check there are no sparks coming from the cable and then start work. B. Push the cable out of the way so that you can start work. C. Quickly touch the cable to see if it is live. D. Tell your supervisor and keep well away from the cable. The correct answer is D. Question 38. You need to use a 230 volt item of equipment. How should you protect yourself from an electric shock? Give one answer. A. Put up safety screens around you. B. Use a generator which has been serviced. C. Use a portable residual current device, RCD. D. Wear rubber boots and gloves. The correct answer is C. Question 39. What two things should you do if you need to run an electrical cable across an area used by vehicles? Give two answers. A. Cover the cable with a protective ramp. B. Cover the cable with scaffold boards. C. Put up a sign that says ramp ahead. D. Run the cable at head height. E. Wrap the cable in yellow tape so that drivers can see. The correct answer is A and C. Question 40. What two things should you do if you need to use an extension cable? Give two answers. A. Check the whole cable and connectors for damage. B. Clean the cable with a damp cloth. C. Only check the part of the cable you need for damage. D. Only uncoil the length of cable you need. E. Uncoil the whole cable. The correct answer is A and E. Question 41. What is the best way to protect an extension cable and also reduce trip hazards? Give one answer. A. Cover the cable with pieces of wood. B. Cover the cable with yellow tape. C. Run the cable above head height. D. Run the cable by the shortest route. The correct answer is C. Question 42. What does it mean if the equipment you are using is issued with a prohibition notice? Give one answer. A. Only supervisors can use it until further notice. B. You can use it as long as you take more care. C. You must not use it unless your supervisor is present. D. You must not use it until it is made safe. The correct answer is D. Question 43. You are walking on site and a large, mobile crane reverses across your path. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Help the driver to reverse. B. Pass close to the front of the crane. C. Start to run so that you can pass behind the reversing crane. D. Wait or find another way around the crane. The correct answer is D. Question 44. Which action should a worker take if they see mobile plant using a route intended only for pedestrians? Give one answer. A. 
have a word with the operator at the end of the day. B. Just be careful in that area. C. Nothing, the driver will know what they are doing. D. Report this to their supervisor. The correct answer is D. Question 45. When moving plant or machinery around site, what should the operator look out for? Give one answer. A. Driving with the handbrake on. B. Driving with the lights on during the day. C. Only driving with limited fuel. D. Speed signs and speed humps. The correct answer is D. Question 46. Why should engines be turned off before leaving a side vehicle? Select two answers. Give two answers. A. Construction machines are not designed to be constantly left running. B. Drivers may accidentally operate levers when climbing into or out of the vehicle. C. Leaving the engine running is a waste of fuel and is therefore a waste of construction budget. D. Members of the public are likely to jump into the vehicle and steal it. E. The sound of the engine may give other workers a headache if left on for too long. The correct answer is B and C. Question 47. Your supervisor asks you to drive a dumper truck but you have not driven one before. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Ask a trained driver how to operate it safely. B. Operate the dumper in an open area in case you make a mistake. C. Tell your supervisor that you are not trained and so cannot operate it. D. Watch other dumpers to see how they are operated. The correct answer is C. Question 48. Where should vehicles be loaded and unloaded? Give one answer. A. On a downward slope. B. On an upward slope. C. On level ground. D. On uneven ground. The correct answer is C. Question 49. What angle should a leaning ladder be used at? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is C. Question 50. A mobile access tower must not be used on what surface? Give one answer. A. A paved patio. B. A smooth concrete path. C. An asphalt road. D. Soft or uneven ground. The correct answer is D.